three, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, four, one, one, four, one, one, four, one, one, three, one, three, one, four, one, one. Four one one four one one three one three four one one four one one four one one three one three one four four one one four one one three one three one Hello everybody, uh, welcome. My name is Harm. And this this is juggling. Well, many thanks to you, dear students, for participating at this unique experiment. Many thanks for your curiosity and many thanks to you, the circus artists, for coming all the way from the Netherlands and France to Münster in order to join our balancing act between art and academia. I think we are sometimes in a bubble in the circus world, but it's really nice to have different uh, yeah, views. At the very beginning, I was always uh, thinking about yeah, how to bring my research also into circus. It's a kind of searching how we can uh, merge art into circus and how we can, for me, use something from the circus into my art. What do you analyze when you're producing something you actually Choose from a cultural archive. So, have you seen many circus or contemporary circus performances? Actually, not that many. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a circus researcher and I have written my PhD about uh, the reading of contemporary circus performances. So, I developed a model to analyze uh, contemporary circus performances, and I'm convinced that this model um, also helps uh, artists during the creation process. And this is kind of uh, the aim of this project to uh, transfer the reading of contemporary circus back to the circus. In our call for artists, we wrote down that we are offering students specialized in the analysis of cultural representations. And that's all they know, I think. When I first saw this, this open call for this program, I thought, finally, finally, there's a, there's a university, even quite close to us, who's interested to who, takes up this, this task that, the, that academia has had for other art forms and other performative art forms and, and is able to, and willing to apply it to circus. Um, and, and then, the, of course, the second thought was, wow, this, this, this program seems, seems, seems to be a very good fit for us. Um, so yeah, that was, it was very clear from, from the moment I, we first read it that we would like to, to apply. I thought like this is a great opportunity for our new project, Square One. Uh, because this is an uh, interaction between a visual artist and three jugglers. So this is uh, 
yeah, actually really nice to to be here or like to get involved in this project because it's uh, also merging different um, mm. disciplines together already in the project and now also with yeah, this university mm. students. We were at a party, at a birthday party of somebody a few years ago and we saw a little cube, a little cube like the one that stands behind us uh, at, at this moment and it it was intriguing. I don't know, uh, maybe you, you sometimes have this, this feeling that you see a work of art and it catches your attention, you, you re respond to it somehow, even though you don't know why. So we had this with this work and we thought, wow, this, somehow this feels like a juggler made this. It feels like a juggling pattern in, in the way it is, it, is a, it is a pattern of lines in, in, in space. And we felt some connection to it, so we asked the, the, the person, the, the hostess of the, of the party, wow, this is a nice piece of art, who made it? And she said, well, you are super lucky because it's a piece by Don Satin and he is present here this evening. So that night we got talking and he explained us about his work and we thought, wow, how amazing would it be to one day actually juggle his work. So after a couple of months we met and he asked me will you join a project based on your work and of course for any uh, artist it's a kind of uh, compliment that uh, youngsters in a way uh, love on a certain level your work, see uh, all kinds of things in your work that you're not conscious of. So for me it was actually immediately um, this could be interesting. Mm -hmm. This could be for me as well and a new input for my work. What, a part of what makes juggling interesting is that you, you, bring, you bring code alive and, that you, and also that, that within, that the more control you have, the more rules you have, the more freedom you get somehow. <laughs> We need is a lot of openness because it's an experiment. We don't really know how the other is working um, because I think the academic work differs a lot from the artistic work, but I think we can learn a lot from each other. So I really hope that the Tortoise Company is going to be able to further develop their piece, Square One, within this week based on our methodology. So where are the equivalences in movement? Where are the ex equivalences? In when I talk to people about my start, profession, like there's a lot of skepticism. Because they are thinking, yeah, circus and research, but how do these words fit like together? Circus is always minutes. like considered as the colorful, creative, chaotic universe and academia is like the opponent, the rational, the um, uncreative space. And I think this pigeonhole thinking does neither circus nor academia justice. And I think it's really important um, to establish communication. You're just looking at this one scene and look how is the, which paradigm is actually um, constructed with, with the text. So don't write down what you want to see in, in the piece, just write down what you actually see. We are taking our time so that we are able to both really dive into this world and explore all the different possibilities juggling-wise so that we can develop a juggling language, but also that we can explore all these different ways that code play, codes play, play ever increasing important roles in, in our society and that we can explore how we can speak about that because we think that's an important theme. Narration. And so now for us the Narration. second Story. part of the creation is when we try to answer the question in which ways can we include all the, the paradigms, all the ways that Don looks at the world, that, that all the ideas behind his art. How can we include this in the piece and how can, how can we use Square One to comment on society without preaching.
I don't think we really made a strategy uh, how we wanted to be open to see what people, yeah, what people bring to the table. We also like to see what sparks people's interest so we can really dive on the interest and the focus of that person because it's also our interest and our focus and energy that we put into the juggling and the circus and the contemporary circus. So this energy that brought us here is also the energy that can bring us further with, from other people. Well, we are approaching circus through the lens of semiotics. And semiotics is always considered as being like really rational. It's a like really tra traditional point of view on, on culture. But I think modern semiotics it like has to deal with, for example, new uh, cultural object, has to deal with the question, how can we transfer on our knowledge or our, our ability to read cultural texts into practice? How can we work with practitioners um, while using semiotic categories, semiotic methodologies? If we try to apply semiotics, the idea is um, whatever text in the sense of, well, cultural artifact in a very, very broad sense uh, you produce, um, it is significant um, in as much you are choosing uh, to say or to show or to act one way rather than another. Um, and the fact you're excluding some possibilities uh, creates meaning. Most of the time the hips are like this. It's really still interesting why he does it the first time and then turns it back again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we, and he turns it the second yeah. again, right? How do you read a juggling performance? Especially because uh, the, the, the lovely people we work with, with here, I think for many of them this is their first contact with contemporary circus, so their main focus is texts. As, as cultural poets, this is, this, this is what we understood. But then, then it turned out that um, for them anything is a text. So a performance can be perceived as a text as well. And, and we analyzed with them, which was really which was lots of fun. And after, so after the, the, the second morning, when we took the time to analyze our, the scenes, it was very clear to us. So this was really nice to have this within the week, this moment of analyzing your performance with people who have seen it uh, for the first time. So at the beginning we have we have music from the beginning, right? We have the acoustic music. We have an exhibition. So, but that's element. Well, then continuing to control. So at first it's the body initiating, and then it's the body following the ball. Yeah. So this is essentially the way um, we read. And we are now trying to use it to write, to write a circus piece. We want to take a step back and um, make it conscious for us, to, to see consciously what we're choosing, to see consciously what meaning we're, going, we're trying to get. So now it's our job to um, develop their idea, to develop um, also this, these other different strands of paradigms we've seen <laughs> Um, for example, the idea of exhibiting humanity and to, you know, get to the point of what um, topics they are touching in this very broad paradigm they are pointing at. We are going to ask the, uh, uh, the, the, the guys to come in and um, go on the countertop and start to juggle, like, juggling patterns and side swap. And they're getting more and more chaotic until they finally, you know, throw the balls into the audience. And, and um, if it's possible, we would like to ask you to, you know, uh, verbally um, re uh, speak the numbers you're throwing. Five, 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 five.
diving into this subject, but there's also a lot of information we get back also in research we couldn't do ourselves yet. So it's really nice that they uh, have their own theoretical background and they can re they did their research before and we brought the we made the material we had before and now we come and make it together and we find cross connections. We had to, to write papers. I talked about codes and irrational numbers about for the golden ratio and Fibonacci numbers. So it was about is there something that is automatically seen as something beautiful by all the people. Please take a position on the side of the space. And I think they think a lot, so they are not like, I'm just doing what feels right, they already think a lot. Um, but still it was nice to see that there are different uh, ways of living and thinking and working than only at university. You seemed kind of more investigating this cabin. I, I don't know, you, it was more acted like you wanted to find out about it. Also because we had to first find out that worked for me. I need a stronger connection between the pattern or something with the work because in that moment, also because we have to focus and now improvise. I didn't feel a connection anymore with the work we're inside. So I felt a disconnect. Mm -hmm. So it would be interesting, what's the, what do I juggle when we're connected with this object? When I saw your performance and went through it, I felt like, wow, you're really creating this uh, museum. For me, atmosphere. one of the moments where I thought, ah, this is going to be interesting, is where they said, OK, so you have this mirror for society and the, and the role for codes and obviously there's there's good codes and there's bad codes and their codes are being used in, in, in evil and in for evil and for good. And so why not let that shine through in your performance and try to find scenes where codes are used for evil and scenes where codes are explicitly used for good without without um, preaching what it should be, but just showing, showing what, it, what it is. And this was, this is uh, a feedback that we got on the first day and I thought, ah, this, this is something we can take and that has an entire range of implications of possible scenes, of possible outcomes. How clear do I have to be? That's for me, yeah, let's say, let's say a main, main question. And that's something to really to think about. Okay, do I have to be so obvious? Do I have to be uh, more mysterious, whatever? It's, it's uh, our challenge to find uh, a way of br bringing a message in a very strict way of dealing with balls. Yeah, you get a lot of opportunities and you have to change things because this is also worry for, but I like you're afraid that you have to change things you want don't want, but because people are saying you do. Like and this is something which you have to learn. And there you have to be get strong in your own vision and your own opinion because uh, otherwise you get lost. It's 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 a, it's a baby that you put out there in in the world and that you do that you take a lot of care of and all of the students of or, or all of the our co-collaborators here they are they are able to, to to phrase very precisely and and they don't let their emotions rule their uh, their feedback which is which is nice because then it also doesn't 
doesn't uh, enter the heart directly, but it, the, the mind has a filter. There is a risk, but that's why we are doing our work together. I, I think it's important in general that artists are talking to researchers, or especially circus artists are talking to, to researchers, and vice versa, because I think we can learn, both learn a lot from each, each other. Academia can learn a lot from circus, and circus from academia. So I think that's the most important uh, aim for the whole week, but also in general. Here you can really go into the concept and really go for it. And that's why also we decided to start working on it on, for a year. Because normally some projects, it's within two months, three months, you, have, you go from concept to finished work and you don't have the time to reflect. Now we can work here, we have time to reflect, we start working again, there's time to reflect. We can train, we can adjust, we, we give ourselves the space to also think about it a bit more, and be together and develop it. I think what we uh, have been doing here is also um, highly relevant for cultural po um, politics and uh, academic politics and that's why today we are going to have a discussion with uh, like representatives of university and rep representatives of uh, the German circus scene. The, the big aim of the project in general is to like show the high potential of the border crossing between art and academia. Well, I'm Michael Quant, I'm a philosopher by my discipline. I'm living and working in this building in the third floor. And the university as a whole should be more open to explore new fields, not to stick to the common rules, but be an experiment themselves. Because a lot of people think, well, that's not really in the heart of what universities should do. And I say, no, wrong idea. It's in the heart because it's dialogue between us and society. And this is the main thing we have to do as universities. I really think this is a great example of what you can do uh, in, in teaching if you really are willing um, to do that. But it also means that it comes with quite a lot of work and with quite a lot of uh, cost for the ones who do that, that there can be changes within the system. And when their universities decide to teach circus and research in circus, that means that there are more and more professionals come, which not come from another art scene like performing arts or from theater, but really um, coming from circus from the beginning. And that helps to develop a scene because like young people who, who already studied or researched in circus at university, they are a good base for the development of circus in Germany. Hello everybody, welcome. My name is Harm and this, this is juggling. I mean, well, well obviously it's a, it's a work of art. It's, it's a sculpture by Dutch visual artist Don Satijn. But it's also juggling. It's, it's um, 411, 411, 313, 411. I had the feeling that dramaturgy and all these systems, it's a way to really deepen this material that we call circus. And I really think that it ne is necessary for the art, but also for myself to try to go further. What worked for me was finding very concrete ways of using rather abstract uh, concepts that we know and I do feel like 
I have more ideas how to even do this in other fields now. I'm happy to go back to, to, to normal life and, and to, to a less structured way of creating uh, at some moments, but I'm also very... Yeah, it's, it's brought us many, many things. It was a rich experience. I felt it gives me as a creator also many tools, different and varying ways to look at the piece that I now have, I filled almost an entire notebook with thoughts, with, with ideas, uh, with, with, with ideas based on ideas, based on thoughts. So we have uh, a, a treasure to, to work with after. The interesting thing was yesterday, uh, Han was uh, telling me, wow, it's so great, we are just starting. And I was like, huh? But we're nearly at the end. And for me, I think that was the biggest present we got during this week, that he had the feeling, now we all, we together are just starting um, something. So I think we are going to, going to work with uh, the Toll Tales also in the future. But I also would like uh, to work with all different kinds of company, with uh, circus teachers, with dramaturgs, uh, directors, uh, circus uh, students. Um, in order yeah, to, to give them a, a methodology um, they can use within their creation process. And yeah, that's what I'm hoping for.